You ready? Domain of composition of functions. Here we go. What do we first want to do? We want to find the domain of the interior function. Let's talk about these compositions. When we compose a function, we take one and stick it inside the other. When I say interior, I'm talking about the g of x right there, whatever you're putting inside. You want to see what violates that domain. Then what? You're going to compose and simplify that guy. Why? Because after the composition, you find the domain of that composition. Because those are more values that you're going to exclude. Then step four. You combine the results from one and three. So you can use set builder or interval notation. So now let's go see an example. And now we're looking at the domain of the composition of rational expressions. So if we look at this first one, we're looking for f of g of x. And the first thing that concerns us is this interior, the g of x. We can't put anything into that function. They can't go into that function. So we look at that. We look at the domain of g of x. We know that we can never divide by 0. So, we got to go, and we can ask ourselves, 1 plus 2x, where are you, 0? And if we solve that on down, we find that x cannot equal 1 half. All right, you know, subtract off, and that's a minus 1 half. You subtract off a 1, and then you divide by 2, and then that's where you arrive at that. That's the first spot that we can't have. So now we're taking that and we're putting that into the second one. And we know we can't have any inputs to f that are going to violate that domain. So we look at what makes f's denominator equal to 0. So we know that 2x cannot equal 0, which means x cannot equal 0. So we have to look at where 1 over 1 plus 2x is equal to 0, y. When we feed g of x, it puts out to f of x. So if g of x puts a 0 to f of x, then f of x is bad news. Turns out, though, that this guy here is never going to be equal to 0, y because that denominator can't be equal to 0, and there's the only place where there's a variable, so g of x is never going to be equal to 0, and the only restriction we have is this piece, and that's how we write it up. We write it up as minus infinity is good, 2 minus 1 half, onion that up with 1 half minus 1 half, to infinity, and that's going to be our domain of our g of f of x, pardon, our f of g of x, y, because we're looking at this guy, boom, what sours that domain? That would be minus one half from here. We can't put minus one half in there because we're going to destroy the whole thing, so that's how we found that, and then we were like, once we put that in there, what makes this domain bad? Well, nothing's going to make that domain bad, because that's never going to be 0, because g of x is never going to be 0. Anyway, let's turn our focus. Take a look at g of f of x. All right, what does that mean? That means you're going to put f inside g. All right, what does that mean? That means you need to first worry about this piece here. You need to worry about that piece being undefined. That piece is undefined. When f is undefined, we see that f is undefined when the denominator is equal to 0. And that happens when x is equal to 0. So we disclude that. All right, so that's going to be an important piece when we're finding the domain of g of f. Now, what else do we need to worry about? We need to also worry about where this is going to be undefined. That's g. g is going to be undefined when 1 plus 2x is equal to 0. So that's when x is equal to, wait for it, 
minus 1 half. All right, so when x is minus 1 half, g is undefined. So we need to find where f of x is going to be equal to minus 1 half. Why? Because we're feeding f inside g. So if f spits out 1 half, then g is going to disagree with that in the composition of g of f of x. We go, where is f of x equal to minus 1 half? Why don't we set it equal to that? f of x is 1 minus x over 2x, and we want to see where it's equal to a minus 1 half, meaning this and that. And when we do that, we'll find, oh god, I'm taking it down here. This is 2 times small canvas, 1 minus x. And then that's going to be equal to a minus 1 times a 2x, because I did this times that. And when I do that, I then do root, root 2 minus 2x is going to be equal to a minus 2x. And then we see those are never going to happen. So we only have one restriction when x is not equal to 0, and we write that as minus infinity. 2, 0, onion, 0, 2, infinity.